But with the hoggart in the oven and his aubergines cooked, Elisha returns to the fray. Lovely, that, mate. Lovely. Does it smell smoked? It, it does remind me vaguely of smoke. It reminds me of like when the chimney was done as a lad and all that <laughs> soot comes down. So Chris doesn't want to be taught either, then. Elisha's now frying the sweetbreads to go with his aubergine and tomatoes. He then chops and stirs the sweetbreads into the smoked aubergine, layers the mixture with tomatoes and pops it all into the oven. Not much for Chris to comment on there. The rabbit legs for the stuffing are now cooked, and once Chris has picked off the meat, he mixes in some pine nuts, mustard, oil and tarragon. He then sews the stuffing into the rabbit's shoulders and gently poaches the lot. Elisha's now ready to make his garlic pearl spelt, and Chris's unrelenting science lessons may finally have worn his rival down. With all this information that I was getting from you, Chris, I thought I had to step up my game. So, so you were reading last night? Yeah, I was finding out about garlic. It's good for heart disease. That's right, you are right on that one, definitely. Huh? So will Chris approve of his pearl spelt too? Elisha thinks so. Oh, great. Right, here we go. Don't tell me there's something nutritional. Yeah, of course, Chris. It's very high in vitamin E. Fantastic. I've used it with rabbit. Have you? Yeah, it could be great with your rabbit dish. Probably would be, eh? I'll show you, come on. So who's the health science evangelist now? Yeah, it is. It's actually quite flattering, isn't it? It is. Just on that. With spelt and hoggett, Elisha's dish has a distinctly pastoral feel about it. But that's not surprising, because he was spoilt for choice when he was choosing his menu for the competition. Elisha loves to cook the very best local produce, so it's rather handy when your restaurant is linked to a large organic estate just a few miles away at Sharpham Park near Glastonbury. His boss, Roger Saul, had agreed to provide him with two of his main ingredients and happily took him on a tour. So, Elisha, although this looks like grass, this is actually spelled in its very early stages. It's an ancient cereal. It's a cousin of wheat. It probably goes back 7,000 years or more. It came into Europe from the Middle East. You can use it just as you would use wheat, but it's got a different gluten structure to it. So, actually, it's great for people with a wheat intolerance, but also it tastes delicious. It's got a lovely nutty flavour to it. Once the spelt's been harvested, it's taken to the estate's mill, where the husks and bran are removed. When we bring the grain in here, the first thing we do is dehusk it, which takes the chaff off. The grain that's then left, the first process we put it through is to pearl it. Now that's, I know, the product you love. Yeah, exactly. And that's our pearl spelt. Grind off the outside the bran. That leaves the pearl spelt inside. And that can then go to make anything from a risotto, to use a stew, to a salad. So who's the chef here? Right, Elisha, this is it. This is the pearl spout. This is a finished product. through the system. I think some great things are going to happen with this.